So we had an entire conversation about schizophrenia. Now it's time to move forward. Not that it really matters what induced it, because the problem is that he hasn't. There's no taking that back after all. Propen okay. Blech. Yeah, no, this is gonna be the rough one. Have fun, Hannah. Propanolo. For Propanolo? No, no, man. Uh, I think it is Propanolo. Yeah, Propanolo. Yeah, Propanolo. Cool. Blech. Okay, we're, we're moving on. For restlessness from <laughs> Akathisha. Acetaloprim. Acetaloprim. For depression. Trazodone for sleep and depression. To pyramate for weight control. Guanfacine for ticks. Tick. And PTSD. And clonazepam as needed for anxiety and panic attacks. Jeez. His head tilts to the right before coming back up in a sort of twitching movement. Twice. Tick. Tick. The symptoms of schizophrenia are devastating enough, but so are the side effects of the antipsychotics to treat it. Side effects that are covered up by medications that cause even more side effects, which in turn are maybe more tolerable. The first antipsychotic he tried made him too tired, and he was finally switched after four months. The switch aggravated the dopamine in his brain, according to his last psychiatrist, and for some reason this meant that his childhood motor and vocal tics got to come back. Not just come back, but they came back with a vengeance, to the point where that when he got especially emotional, his neck and sometimes his body would go into an uncontrollable twitching fit. Alright, this doesn't really relate to anything. I just want to point this out to DJ. Look at Cameron's shirt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a cord. The it hurt. Flat minor. Nice. At least he could hide it. Or at least control it when he was younger. Hold on, you said that's a B flat minor. <laughs> oh. DJ is now going over to the piano. <laughs> nah, darn. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> it makes him feel like some kind of freak show in public. Mm -hmm. His vocal tics would come up at the worst moments. And talking to anyone other than Devin would result in awful humiliations that sometimes triggered psychosis again. But when a vocal tick involving his diaphragm appeared, one that he'd never had before, Cameron really began to despair. It would force him to exhale for 10 to 15 seconds before holding, holding it until he nearly blacked out. Then it would release, and he would gasp in there again, vision coming back through blurry tears, only for it to happen half a dozen more times in agonizing waves. It was so distressing that each time it happened, it triggered an episode, and he'd be left with so many ticks happening at once that even Devin couldn't communicate with him. The familiar tightening in his abdomen, signaling the approach of another episode, was enough to make him whine and cry in dread. All of this because of that damn pill that's supposed to help him. Three or four of those vocal episodes every day for a week, and Devin had finally had enough and found a different psychiatrist. This helped a great deal and Cameron found himself trusting her far more than he ever did his first psychiatrist. So that's actually good that they switched, because like, this is something I always tell people who are interested in therapy or uh, seeing a psychiatrist e either. 
uh, if you don't trust or get along with your therapist, um, you can give them like eight weeks, but if you're feeling like you're not improving after that, yeah, you can seek someone else. You do not have to remain with one person unless you are forced to by geographical uh, restrictions. Yeah, well, I mean, even nowadays, I don't know. I don't know how accessible it is to a lot of people, but nowadays you can even like see a counselor or a therapist online at times. So this YouTube episode brought to you by BetterHelp. Oh hell no, it's not. <laughs> I I will say the reason why I brought up the geographical restrictions is because I know in like the area that I live in, there's literally one psychiatrist within like 200 miles. So yep. yeah. Sometimes you gotta deal with what you gotta deal with, but if you if there are others, you can seek the others. She immediately switched him to another antipsychotic, one that she said would help his tics too. Still, when Cameron had been readying himself to take his first dose, he broke down, and he had cried like a child. He even begged Devin not to make him take it, which just made the whole situation so much worse. What if it caused more problems to show up? What if it made him worse? Cameron read all about the horrible lifelong side effects that antipsychotics can cause. Dyskinesia, akathisia, dystonia, catatonia and his old childhood bane that he had almost forgotten about, Tourette Syndrome. The word... I think it's tardive? tardive? Yeah, tardive. The word tardive can be placed in front of any of those symptoms, which means that even if you stop taking the drug, and even if years go by, the symptom lingers. And then there's always the worry that tolerance might build. Super sensitivity might set in, and the dosage might need to be increased, and then he might develop a treatment-resistant form of schizophrenia. <laughs> All from these little pills, wreaking havoc on the synapses of his brain. More poison. More brain damage. Cameron rubs his right ear vigorously. You're the brain damage, asshole. Fuck you, you brain damage piece of shit. Why don't you take the whole bottle? Pathetic squeak. Think you can talk to me like that, you fucker? Remembering the management techniques that th his therapist taught him, Cameron takes a deep breath. Okay, time to take my medication. It's been a few weeks now, and my ticks have decreased by over half. I haven't had a breathing tick in four days. I feel like this is good progress. What? Think is? Positive symptoms have decreased by maybe 40% over the last week. Good progress. I just hope my negative symptoms improve as well. That's my next goal. Once I reach stability. His thoughts are his own again. And that makes Cameron feel at least a little better, knowing that some things are coming easier. He begins up opening his pill organizer and pulls out the most important one. The psychiatrist had been right, and for once, Cameron feels like they might have at least found the right road to the new him. Despite tolerating Paliperidone, much better than the last antipsychotic, it still causes the same side effects that make him need to take all the other meds. At least it's making its ticks better. Tick. 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 Though he doubts they'll ever truly go away like they did in his childhood. Tardive Tourette Syndrome. Devastating on its own, but still control controllable, manageable with time. He has to believe that. 
at the sound of pills rattling against plastic, seems to echo through the kitchen. Cameron hears Devin in his study. Oh, you're taking them now? Just a sec. That was fast. <laughs> Cameron mutters under his breath, feeling just a little resentful knowing that Devin had been listening in on his thinking out loud technique. Cameron sighs and picks up the pill again, staring at it closely, as if able to see its molecular structure, engineered to block the dopamine receptors in his brain. The root cause of psychosis, at least at the molecular level. It's more complicated than that. It always is. Devin comes in with just his underwear on. I mean, they're living together at home. It's, it's understandable. <laughs> Look at him, dude. No, I was just commenting. He's buff as shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no. Remember, Devin fucking hit the gym every goddamn day. <laughs> oh, man. Teddy bear. Teddy bear. Teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Thank you. <laughs> a year ago, it would have been a sight that Cameron would have appreciated. He probably would have put his arms around him and rubbed his face into his chest like he used to. But his sex drive was killed months ago, either from meds or from one of the many symptoms of schizophrenia. And it's just another reminder that he's not who he used to be. While sex is the last thing on his mind, Cameron knows it's important in their relationship. He occasionally would force himself to do it and pretend to enjoy it, but everything aches now. And in the end, he'd find himself staring at the ceiling. Devin noticed and eventually suggested they wait until Cameron feels better until he actually wants it himself, which only made Cameron feel worse. Devin's... is a libido? Libido. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't plan on censoring this. This isn't, like, this isn't... This, this is, is not like, sexual, yeah. Actively He talks about sex stuff, but it's not sexual. Like, isn't... Correct. Like, I guess that's the best way to put it. Okay. Mm. Devin's libido is stronger than Cameron's ever was, so he knows it must be sexually frustrating for the bear. But right now, Devin is just standing there, smiling pleasantly as he watches Cameron. Making sure you take your poison. He wants your brain damaged more than he already is. A jolt of fear. A dip into unreality. Cameron feels angry at how easily the voice slipped into his thoughts again. Useful poison. <laughs> Cameron winces at the crazy coming out of his mouth. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud, if that's what you're wondering. Okay, that's good. Remember, it does seem to act up right before you take your medication. So, so don't worry about it too much. Also, I just gotta point out, I love how much art they put into this. This is the yep. end mm -hmm. of the story. This is, they, they didn't have to put in this much effort, but how many different poses, how many different expressions? Like, oh my god. Yeah. Yep. I, that's, that's so neat. I, I like the background because without 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 all of them in it it actually does look like an actual photo mm -hmm. of like somebody's kitchen before i look at the small little details where i can see that they're they're drawn and painted on i'm like oh my gosh also i like the shadows oh yeah nice yeah no like yeah. the art in oh, this yeah. game is beautiful just so much of this game i love art music mm -hmm. everything Story, mm -hmm. characters. Mm hmm Yeah. You know I don't need you to watch me anymore. It's quiet as Cameron swallows the pill, angling himself so that Devin can see. Then he follows it with the rest of the five or so pills he holds in his paw. 
Cameron finishes swallowing those, knowing that, in an hour, he won't be able to keep his eyes open. Oh man, you can see Cameron now is looking a little bit upset towards Devin. Uh... Right? Mm. Or do you still not trust me? No. No. I agree with you. But we also agreed I'd do it for at least a year, just in case. Even if you said you were fine, remember? Look, Devin's not looking down. I'm, I'll, I'll stop commenting oh. about this. But, uh, each, oh. each line, they change their expressions. Like, ah. Uh. No, I'm looking. Cam is, like, annoyed but smiling. <laughs> like, Cam's like, I hate it. I also love it. Cameron hates Come the on. fact that he's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because you don't trust me. No. Spitefully, Cameron turns to show Devin the underside of his tongue, as if the bear might be suspicious he's hiding it. Cameron. You want to do a cat research too? Hey, you know, maybe that can be our solution. I take my meds and you get to play with my ass. Uh. Cameron feels the burst of anger from Devin, and for some reason, it feels good. That's kind of a fucked up thing to say, don't you think? Is that what you think I even care about right now? Devin's already sounding angry, uh -oh. quicker than he usually does, and suddenly they're in a fight. The ones they never had before Echo. Things must be getting extra stressful for Devin, as if it's this easy to provoke him. And Cameron should do something to help him, to soothe him, but instead he wants this fight. For a moment, he even wants Devin to hit him. Kill him. Grab one of the knives. Punch him right in the face, and end everything as they know it. Not much for them to lose, anyway. Why are you all of a sudden intent on me taking my meds? Pretty different from college, right? This is so different, Cameron. I know, I talked shit on psychology before. I act like I knew what it was about, but... Like you say, everyone changes. It's because I'm a problem to you now, and you just want me to take what will make me not crazy, even if it makes me feel like shit. I want you to get better. I'm not going to get better, Devin. This is permanent. It doesn't mean you can't get better. That's the point. And then I'll relapse. If you relapse, we help you get better again. I don't care about that stupid voice anymore. Or even the ticks. Fuck you. I'll make you care, you piece of shit. It feels like my soul has been sucked out, and I don't know if it's the mess or the crazy or just me, but I hate it! I hate it too. I hate it so much. I hate you that, that you feel this way. That's why I'm doing this. You don't even have a fucking clue what this is like. Everyone talk, just talks about the voices and hallucinations and delusions. What about the cognitive shit? I can't think. Nothing feels real. I feel dead. You're right. I don't. But you're all I think about almost every minute of the day because I see you suffer and I want to stop it. Lies, idiot. Fucking squeak. Hurt him, kill him. I'm probably suffering because of the meds. It's like back in college, but ten times worse. I can't write or even listen to music anymore. I don't want to do anything. Come on, Cameron. This is the main reason people relapse. Their positive symptoms go away, they think they're better, and they stop their meds so the negative symptoms aren't as, aren't as bad. And then they relapse. We need time. A year at least. And maybe then we can start tapering off. But not now. And what if I do relapse? It's like only half of schizophrenics that each achieve full 10 year remission. Medical literature he obsessed over pours out of his mouth. Shitty quality of life, 
up to 30 years off the average life expectancy, incurable. Then we'll try again, right? A burst of anxiety from Devin. While Cameron never thought hard on what he might do, he does suppose he'd consider ending it. If this is how the rest of his life will play out, he's sure he will eventually. But only when Devin isn't here to take that blow. Also, I, I keep pointing these things out, but like, I love that as the argument died down, the music switched over to this calmer version. Yep. They actually changed from minor to major. <laughs> Although it's back in minor now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hates you, wants you to die. Her voice continues to talk, and Cameron rubs his ear, trying to ground himself. Right. The obvious signs of Cameron having an episode seems to bring Devin back down as well. The bear quickly hugs Cameron. I'm sorry. Aww. <laughs> Despite his sore and sensitive skin, it feels good after the burst of anger and sadness. I'm just sad. I'm sad because I had such a good life with you, and it feels like it was just yesterday, but it's just gone now. It's strange that he can remember his past life so vividly, the feeling of being mostly normal in his brain. Devin squeezes him tighter. You always talk about the new you, and how we just have to wait for him to get here. We'll have a new life. It'll just be a rough couple of months. Maybe a bit longer. Cameron sniffles. What day is it anyway? Like the 15th? The 24th, I think. I forgot your birthday was last week. I just remembered now. That's <laughs> laughs. Honestly? Me too. The hardest thing about that particular argument for Devin was that he completely empathized with Cameron. He can't imagine being in that situation made to take medication that changes him so fundamentally that he's not in full control of his movements or even his breathing. The coyote is justified in being angry, sad, childish, and sometimes outright spiteful. That doesn't mean that it isn't unsettling seeing the Cameron lash out and cry in ways Devin had never seen him come close to before. At points, it feels like he's watching the deconstruction of a life in real time. It leaves his stomach feeling hollow and sick, like it did days after Brian had a go at it. The thought of the old bear makes Devin so angry that now he wishes the man was still alive. At least there'd be a chance for him to try and knock out a few more of his teeth in court during the victim impact statement or something. And the stress continues to build as Cameron's condition remains unstable. Tra the transfer was scheduled for November, and Devin is trying to type up an extremely apologetic and professional email to explain the situation, and also request a possible video meeting to delay the transfer. Because remember, they were going to move to Bonneville. Mm. It's a reasonable request, especially considering the state of the world at the moment.
But then, seemingly out of nowhere, his breathing picks up speed. Confused, Devin watches as the edges of his vision begin to darken. He can't figure out why he suddenly feels as if he's going to pass out. The first thing that comes to Devin's mind is Arturo's older brother, who died of a pulmonary embolism after a surgery. The one that already talked about casually while high, even though Devin, he, Devin knows he's still devastated by it. Devin stands up from his desk, walking, then sinking to the ground as the room spins. Cam! I need help! Please! I... I, I can't... Before he can stop himself, he blurts out Cameron's name, simultaneously questioning whether it's a good idea or not. Cameron, seeing his boyfriend die in front of him, won't exactly help his mental state, so it's better that he's probably sleeping like a rock right now. Oh, no. oh my gosh. He pulls out his phone as he's on his knees, having pressed the nine and one before a very groggy, sedated Cameron comes in, his expression of bleary confusion turning to fear. D d don't, don't worry, I, I just... Uh, I just... Can't catch my fucking breath. A look of recognition comes over the coyote's face, and kneeling in front of Devin, he presses the bear's head against his chest. Devin, it's okay. We're okay. Breathe with me. Mm -hmm. Devin's not sure if that's what the problem is, but after just a few seconds, it stops. Are you okay? I've never seen you like that before. Devin sees Cameron neck tick twitch multiple times, and he immediately feels like an idiot. Here he is, having a stupid, breathless panic attack while Cameron is having vocal tics that force him to almost pass out from not being able to breathe. Devin tries to get him to go back to bed, but Cameron sleeps on the sofa in the study, determined to be there if Devin needs him again. While Devin feels like he should be the one doing the comforting right now, he is glad to have Cameron there. So that's what the coyote feels like when he's panicking. A scary moment, but Devin doubts he'll let the feeling sneak up on him again, now that he's familiar with it. Oh, Devin. Yeah. Just because you're not the psychotic, the one who's having uh, schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenia yeah. does not mean that your problems are not valid also. Yeah. He had considered therapy and medication, like he's constantly trying to find for oh, Cameron, Devin. but you should... Oh, Devin, you comfortable rich white boy. Oh, my gosh. It's like, and taking care of someone in that much of a severe mental state also does things to your own yep. so mental I health. Throw, I do want to throw out there, I don't think Devin is white. Because um, well, I, I, I looked up their last names. Um, Cameron is Cameron Wilson, and Devin is Devin Ortega. Let, let me reword okay. this so it's not um, referring to... Uh, race no, i more so meant privilege. Uh, yes you, you little you little privileged boy yeah like so so it, i think you know you get a lot of people who are in comfortable situations who are like oh i can be okay right i didn't have this big life thing that the other person had so i can push through my problems i mean i don't think that just necessarily comes from a place of privilege. Um, sometimes people feel like they really shouldn't go to therapy. Oh yeah, it's, like, it's that I'll fight out my problems kind of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends on person to person, but... There's yeah. actually another reason why I bring up that his last name is Ortega, because I know with like a lot of people who come from like minority communities, especially in the United States, 
there was usually a lot more bias against seeking therapy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's I, the thing I, is, while Devin may be from, like, a more affluent family, the fact that his last name is Ortega means that he's, like, of either Spanish descent or maybe, like, even possibly Mexican descent, considering, mm-hmm. like, where they live. So, I could see him having, like, some of his family having, like, those biases still, potentially. Mm-hmm. I know from, Rick, I know from first-hand experience. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But yeah, no, genuinely, I, I, I'm I still fascinated that, like, these characters all have, like, full names and everything. They're not mentioned in-game, but it is it is interesting, because, like, yeah, Devin Ortega and Cameron Wilson, like, would you have guessed that that was their last names? Not necessarily, no. Wilson, I, get, I get Wilson vibes from Cameron. I'll say, Wilson, like, I could, I could see. Cameron owns a, um, you didn't know this, actually, but Cameron owns a soccer ball company. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now just, just imagining balls. that movie Cameron. With Cameron there instead. <laughs> Survivor with Cameron just hanging out with <laughs> Just Cameron's face on a soccer ball. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, yeah, it's, it's Devin actually who's Survivor and he made the ball into Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Still a more beautiful love story than Twilight. I want to see part of that. Somebody has to make, like, a Cameron, a Cameron ball. Devin's just lovingly holding on to, to this ball with Cameron's face on it. Beard growing out. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> I'm gonna say, hold that thought. You're my, you. It'll be fun. It'll be either funnier or more tragic later. Oh no! Oh no! Uh-oh. Oh, there, my, uh, headset. Oh. Eh. there we go. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, part of him has to. Ad- part of him has to admit that he's scared too. Besides, he's not. Bad enough that he needs that help. I disagree. It was bad, but okay. I'm just gonna throw out there one thing that I try and live my life by, and I always try and remind other people: comparison is the death of happiness. Do not compare mm-hmm. yourself to others. Just compare yourself to yourself. This is mm-hmm. both good and bad things. Mm-hmm. He'll settle on what always ha- helped him deal with stress in the past, which is being active. I mean, being active isn't a bad thing. But... Gee, I had a mental breakdown. Let's go run. Uh, it's it not a help. bad thing. It, it does help, help with anxiety. Running does help with anxiety, but it, it would be best if you do other things uh, alongside it. But like, yes. like in therapy. Yes. yes. <laughs> but exercise yep, yep. is genuinely like one of the best things you can do in general to help with anxiety. Like, yes. Not just with anxiety, mm-hmm. but it's like a whole slew of different things. Yep. Mm-hmm. Being physically oh, yeah. active oh. is really strangely, like, well, not strangely, but it's very helpful for a slew of different uh, parts of, like, your mental and physical well-being. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I live a, a rather sedentary lifestyle, but I like, I do like biking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, there you yeah. go. Yeah, no, and biking is a very healthy form of exercise at a lot of different ages. Uh, exercise will be good for both of them, actually. Once he sends this email... He'll figure out how to renew both of their gym memberships, assuming the place is even still open. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, it's October of uh, 2020. Yeah. What are they going to do? Both get COVID now? Oh, good. I do remember this. Devin steps out of the gym, taking a deep breath of the frigid February air. So remember that thought I told you to hold? Here it is. There aren't many cars or people on the street. Not this early on a Saturday morning. Probably because they're sleeping in like they should be. Devin instinctively begins to reach out for Cameron's paw. But he's not there. He hasn't been there for a while now. Almost a year. Well, what he used to be is there at home. Oh no! Urn sitting on Cameron's old dresser, along with all the coyotes' other little possessions that Devin had kept. Oh no. 
it hurts even more because he's almost certain that Cameron would have loved the city. He would do a better job remembering that Cameron isn't right next to him if... Quit thinking about me like I'm dead. I'm not. I'm thinking about you like you're physically gone. I do miss being physically present. I guess I could be dead, but it doesn't really matter. You're not dead. I'm just like, you're a vessel now. That is such a creepy word. Just say I'm like, your passenger. By the way, you reek? It's Saturday, so I don't have to work. Besides, I'm not taking a shower when the, when the air dryer temperature is room temperature. I mean, I didn't say I didn't like it. It's just a fresh workout. Devin grunts as he makes his way through the parking lot toward his car. You were pushing yourself really hard, to be honest. Take it easier next time. Take it easy. It's what it is what got you sh hurt. Anyway, the more echoes we can kill off, the better. I doubt we can have that much of an impact, Devin. This shit is old. Ancient, even. It's a lot bigger than us in a lot of different ways. I just want to see how well this works out. If it can be done, maybe we can't tell others about it. Start a movement? To kill off haunted places at the source? But how many people have their dead boyfriend in their head giving them psychic abilities? Hmm. Well, I won't tell them that part. Just the psychic part. Ah, you gonna take credit for my abilities? <laughs> hey, I'm learning to fight too. You see how much I've been bulked up? Devin, Devin flexes his muscles underneath his winter coat and padding. Muscles he wished he had when he fought Brian. I didn't know you could punch ghosts, and I wish you had, you'd get a different coach. He beats on you way too hard. I know what I was getting into. Anyway, remember about the source? Usually it's some shitty person feeding these places. Oh, well, punching real people sounds worse, actually. Either way, this is all a good workout. You should try- Devin catches himself halfway through saying it. Even though he knows it's coming, and even though he tries to stop it, the imagery of Cameron's ruined face flashes through his mind. He should just be happy that the coyote is still talking to him. That he's still with him. Kind of. I miss you. Please don't do that, Devin. I'm right here. I want to hold you. You basically are. And I'm giving you a big emotional hug right now. I might also be feeling out your muscles too, because you have bulked up nicely. <laughs> Devin laughs and wipes his eyes. Thanks, Cam. Cameron watches all of this, but not that Cameron in Devin's head. The Cameron that avoided the shotgun, that survived. He's had these dreams a few times. At first, he simply thought them to be traumatic nightmares from a traumatic event. But this is one of those dreams that feels so real, he almost can't tell he's dreaming. They're not really nightmares either. Usually they're mundane, kind of funny, and kind of sad. The dreaming Cameron, for some reason, doesn't trust this passenger Cameron at all. This version of himself feels off, like there isn't even a soul to go with him. Otherwise, he sounds and acts just like he does, or did before the diagnosis. It makes him wonder if he'd trade off giving the opportunity.
Cameron isn't waking up, so with little else to do, he reaches out mentally and digs into this other Cameron a bit deeper. But he sees less only a second. After tearing out Brian's throat, this Cameron immediately began communicating with Devin. It's not an illness, not like what Cameron has, but it's still Echo. It's part of that town, and Cameron doesn't want this Devin to... Devin, he's back. A feeling difficult to describe comes over Cameron. It's something from that dead Cameron, that entity that acts and talks like Cameron. The thing that's currently attached to that Devon. He's tied up, bound with rope, with a foul-tasting rag gagging him. The big bear has been gone for over an hour. But no matter how hard he tries, he can't make the zip ties and chains move. And then his stomach turns, and the meal Brian had bought him at the bar starts to come back up. He's going to throw up, but he's chained down on his back with a gag in his mouth. He's going to throw up, and then he's going to drown. Vomit floods his mouth. Cameron leaps out of bed, one paw over his muzzle. He stubs his toe horrifically on the door frame to the bathroom, bending back the claw so that it's left bleeding and almost ripped out. But he makes it into the toilet in time to retch up a small amount of whatever it is in the stomach. His name was Alan. A rat, Cameron thinks, but the coyote can't remember the last name, the last name of the man who drowned in his own vomit. Cameron sobs, both for himself and for the poor young rat that lived a short, hard life, only for it to end by choking on the shitty food Brian lured him in with. After a minute, the coyote calms down and whistles. Thankful that Devin is an incredibly heavy sleeper. What he'd seen definitely happened. And even though the police stopped trying to interview him after learning about his schizophrenia diagnosis, he would still put an anonymous tip tomorrow. Cameron knows that there's at least twice as many victims that the police know about, and he plans to report every single one that he sees. Alright, so before we move into this scene, I wanted to talk with you guys about the last two scenes that we saw. So, um, that other Cameron and that passenger Cameron that was inside Devon. What do you think about that? I think that I'm getting your Sam vibes. Yeah, that's what I've been mm-hmm. feeling too. It, it's it's part of like uh, also for me just the fact that 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 Cameron has dreams about it makes me think of like that's the multiple ending thing in this game. Mm-hmm. That both realities oh. are maybe... Oh, there's, there's an ending where Dev is just running around being a freaking ghostbuster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing. He's talking to what he thinks is Cameron. Because and it's not. He points out, we're, we're following the perspective of the real Cameron, and he points out, that thing isn't actually me. It yeah. acts yeah. like me, and it doesn't want Dev into something before it realizes the real Cameron's there, yells, Devin, it's back, and then immediately cuts off contact with the real Cameron. Mm -hmm. I think he specifically said, he's back. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right, I think it was, it was, he's back. And that shows me that whatever 
Sam and that Cameron are, they aren't really good. They may help sometimes, but I think they do it for other, probably not beneficial reasons. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, yeah. Oh, yes? So that's... So... Wait, so... Just so I can understand this, try to at least, that is... Is that a different time? So it's a parallel universe, universe, I guess? Yeah. yeah. It's an alternate uh, so, parallel universe where Cameron was shot. Oh, Remember how Cameron okay. like saw like a reality where the he shoot, got yeah. shot and died and can't and then Devin rips Brian's throat out? It ended shortly after that where Cameron then went, well you know what? No, pushes the gun up and causes the gun to like go off next to his head, but he at least doesn't get shot from it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Hmm. Well Okay, wow, okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I I do enjoy they did another emotional roller coaster on us where they're like, because they hinted that Cameron has had suicidal thoughts, and you're like, yeah. oh and then no, be like, like, shit, he went Devin through with it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I I was like, is that? It's Devin with Wilson. Like, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I mean personally, I do think that like having having a Cameron in Devin's in Devin's head I think is silly and just kind of going along with you like oh I'm feeling I'm, feel, I'm feeling I'm feeling your back you have like nice to you have nice toned abs but I think that's really I, I, I think that's pretty cute I, I I did enjoy that um but it it was just odd well it um, felt yeah, off it, yeah it, it felt, felt it, it like there were hints there were hints of like what Cameron used to be, but it his intentions weren't quite the same. I, I was getting like. very like you know how sometimes Chase and Leo are very unhealthy with each other. Mm. Like hey, there's a very like serious thing. Yeah, yeah okay, let's have sex, right? Like uh. I was getting very that vibe. Hey, you're talking to the dead version of me, but boy howdy, are you hot? <laughs> Right, like. Well, I mean, like that's similar to like how Leo kind of was, because like now that we've gotten far enough in his route, I can point this out. Whatever that other chase was, the one that is like referred to as the hay in the files, yeah, yeah, that thing is most certainly not chase, but sure is the chase that Leo wants to believe in. Yep. And then oh, for uh, Devin and Cameron here. Well, Cameron wouldn't. It didn't live long enough to change from schizophrenia affecting him as heavily. So, yeah, if Devin was gonna start building a new version of Cameron, it would be based off of the old stuff. Yeah. And it's yeah. not Cameron though. It's definitely closer to whatever Sam is though. It's heavily hinted that that is whatever Sam is within uh, Chase and. Um, Sydney, as well as uh, Sydney's dad's heads, and then eventually like Flynn's head as well. Like that is, it's gotta be the same. Right. Um, what Which I know I, that like, makes no sense to you, mm -hmm. uh, Fane. I was so when they said that there was a there was a second split. Would what like does that mean? You do you think you could? You could kind of say that that was just the two different parallel timeline, or is okay. it just just a metaphorical split in terms of per, a personality change as well as just you know? It was it was for Cameron. It was ta Cameron was talking about a split in his own life, where when his mother had died, that was when he got himself cleaned up. He used her death to motivate right. himself to get better, clean up. Uh, have a good and healthy relationship with Devin. Right. He started to actually live a lot better from there on. And that was the first divide in his life. The second divide was the events of Arches here, where he thinks now he's heading into another dark chapter of his life. <laughs> Playing the piano there, DJ. 
Oh yeah, he he can't hear you right now because he uh, he's far enough away. He can't wear his headphones. Okay. Oh no! Oh, what, 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 what were you playing? Uh, B flat minor. It was bugging me. I was uh, trying to figure out if it was the, what they were playing in the background. Yeah, maybe not now, but back in that particular scene. Yeah. I can pull up the music again later once we're done. I don't yeah, have anything I, to do until 7 p.m. today, so. He, he was wearing a B flat. His shirt had B flat mi minor on it, and I wanted to, and I want to know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I really wanted to point out there. Um, so, Seb, uh, now you can tell Harry that there is a reason for why he will want to play Arches. Yep. <laughs> I want those nachos. Or just mm -hmm. those, I'm sorry. Tortilla chips? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That better be guacamole. Guacamole! Well, whenever you're ready, Hannah. Okay. Oh, I'm getting hungry, thanks. Oh, and another thing that probably confirms that, um, Devin is probably some, like, Hispanic background. His sister's name is Lupita. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about oh, yeah. that. <laughs> Lupita is a very Hispanic name. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so I'll go ahead and move it along. 